Shalom, 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 shalom. First and foremost, giving infinite praises, glory, and honor unto Yahweh Ba'ashim, Yahusha Ba'ashim, Rechakwadash, giving double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone and Shalom and salutation to all you sensei Akim across the four winds, pushing his truth with sincerity of heart. I'm your fellow servant, Kasama Gan from a DC camp, coming at you through the spirit and power of Yahweh Ba'ashim, Yahusha Ba'ashim. Now, this is going to be um, a quick lesson of exhortation. As we know, we're inching closer and closer to this to the end of this thing. There's a lot of movement going on in the Middle East, all right? Uh, just like it was prophesied in the scriptures, all right, that the Third World's War was going to come about. Now, we do know that everything has to happen in order, and we know before Israel and, um, and Iran really kick it to high gear, um, you know, we, we have to have a collapse of uh, individual societies, all right? primarily the collapse of the West, all right? the Western societies, beginning with um, the virgin daughter of Babylon, a.k.a. the United States. All right? So you have to have a financial collapse. You have to have a change of currency. All right. And when these things happen, then, you know, you have Iran and Israel kick it to high gear. All right. Because right now you must understand that Iran has a leash on their neck. And that leash is is really, ultimately, it's the spirit. It's Yahweh Ba'ashim al but the, the leash on, on a carnal level, the leash that Iran has on their neck is Russia. All right? It's Russia, Gog and Magog. You know, and then also Israel has, quote, well, Israel is slightly different because Israel actually, the state of Israel actually has a leash on the United States. All right? So, Although, it's, although the United States is supposed to have a leash on Israel, in this case, Israel has a leash on the United States, and Israel would drag the United States to the Third World's War. But Iran has a leash on his neck, and and, and a leash comes from uh, Russia. So Iran can't really make big moves unless they get the green light from Russia, because they got to make sure that once they make their move on, on the state of Israel, they know that the United States and the UN, the United Nations, and NATO will get involved. So they have to make sure that Russia and China uh, are down and giving them the green light. Until they get that green light from Russia and China, they, they're not, Iran is not going to make a big move because they're not stupid enough. They know they get, without the help of Russia and China, they get wiped out. So the, the reason why I'm talking about this is because you still got to remember that, the, you know, this is a, mar it's a, this is a marathon. It's not, it's not a sprint. Now, although things are moving faster and faster, you still have to be mindful that we're still running a marathon. And, 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 you know, you don't want to be in a mindset where you're like, hey, man, this thing, oh, World War, World War III is going to pop off tomorrow. And the most side's moving so fast. Why we got to, why we got to wait for the mark of the beast? It's not about what we want. It's, it's about how prophecy is set up. So you got to put your spirit accordingly so you don't get disappointed in the spirit into thinking that, ah, see, the Lord is is taking forever or the Lord is not moving or whatever, um, you know, demonic thought might, you know, come into your mind to kind of really um, hurt your spirit, hurt your faith. Now, when you look up the word marathon, it says, um, on the Edelman line, it says marathon race, long distance foot race of 26 miles 385 yards. So it's a long distance foot race. All right. So this is, we, we, we in this thing for the long run. All right. There's no plan B and plan C just in case things don't work out, just in case there is no Third World's War, just in case there is no microchip, aka Mark of the Beast. Nah, we don't, we don't have that mindset because we basically, we all in. All right. We understand that regardless of how long it takes, you know, we, we, we in for the long haul. All right. This is a lifetime commitment. This is not a partial commitment. It's not a temporary commitment. There's no retirement. All right. The scripture tells you in Isaiah, Isaiah asked the Lord, uh, um, until when should I, you know, uh, stop doing the work? And he, the Lord said, until the cities be waste, all right, be, be destroyed. All right. So marathon, it says long distance foot race of 26 miles. It says name of the town of marathon in Attica. Site of a famous battle in in antiquity. The place name is literally Fennel Field. Fennel. Greek marathon. It said probably so-called because the herb the, the herb grew nearby. Alright, so when you skip down, it says the race was introduced as an athletic event 
in the 1896 revival of the Olympic Games. It is based on the story of the Greek hero Phidippides, who in 490 BCE ran to Athens from the plains of Marathon to tell all the ally Greek victory there over Persian army. It says the oldest form of the story, Herodotus, tells that he ran from Athens to Sparta to seek aid, which arrived too late to participate in the battle, but approved the tactics. The 1896 Olympics cho chose a, late, a latter story, less likely but more dramatic. The five, five deputies ran to Athens from the battlefield with the good news. All right, so clearly this is uh, going back, you know, this is going back to ancient Greece. Uh, you have some, um, you know, Greek, uh, you know, I'll probably say Greek folk folklore. Some of, you know, of course we know about the, you know, we, you know you've seen the movie, the, uh, the 300, part one and part two, right? 300 with the Spartans and then you have... Uh, three hundred part two when you have uh, uh the Athenians, uh fighting against uh the Persians and then later on at the end of the movie you know, you have the Spartans kind of arrive, uh right when the Athenians was you know getting their ass kicked, so I guess from what they're saying is that the the um that that character, Herodotus uh, or the other one, five five the Pedes, would be the character that actually ran from Athens to uh, Sparta to kind of uh, let them know about um, the Persian invasion, basically. So, I mean, again, that's that's that's, that's uh, kind of the roots of the word marathon, all right? But we know that word to be, what? To be a long-distance foot race. Now, let's go... <clears throat> Without further ado, let's go to the book of Corinthians, chapter 9, verse 23. This is Paul speaking. It says, I do everything to spread the good news. Well, actually, this is, I have to I have to say this. This is the NLT. All right, this is an NLT, not the King James. Uh, this is 1 Corinthians 9 and 23. It says, I do everything to spread the good news and share in its blessing." Don't you realize that in a race, everyone runs, but only one person gets the prize. So run to win. All right. So we we run the spiritual race to win. All right. What do we want to win? We want to win. You know, you have a shot. You know, we want to um, inherit the kingdom of heaven. All right. It says, so run to win. It says, verse 25, all athletes are disciplined in their training, all right, and um, of course, double honest to all uh, the uh, and double honest and shout out to um Apostle Tahar, Elder Apostle Tahar, you know he uh, through his spirit, um uh, mentioned you know, uh diligence again once again I mean again he's he's been speaking about diligence as as long as we've known him, you know um dating back to the uh the, you know mid two thousand so he's always spoke about that and you know. <clears throat> As a as a as an OG vet warrior, he understands you know more than anybody, um, the magnitude of of what we are part of. Um, you know, fourth quarter type situation. You know, we we you know we we this thing is about to really pop off, but yet we still have to be wise. We still have to to understand prophecy and how it's supposed to come down in order, and we have to be disciplined uh, and and in our training. Because we being spiritually trained. Because once all hell breaks loose, the training is gonna be over. All right, you know you're gonna you're gonna have to be out there in the how you know well not highways. You're gonna be out there in the in in in, in the road basically like the movie The Road, aka the Book of Eli. Like at that point, training is over. So the training is happening right now. So verse twenty five it says all athletes are disciplined in their training. They do it. To win a prize that will fade away. So the athletes like LeBron James and all these top athletes that we have uh, in football, you know, football, basketball, uh, hockey. I mean, these guys, I mean, there's a reason why it's only a few of them that can do that. If, if you see the training that these guys do behind closed doors, you will realize why they get paid the amount of money they, they, they get paid. 
All right. The professional on the professional level is on a whole different level. The amount of money that they spend on their bodies, the, the amount of time dedicated to training. Most people wouldn't want to, uh, you know, endure that type of uh, uh, stress, you know, mentally and physically. But see, they do that, but actually to win a prize that will fade away. Because all the money they make in the houses, the, the women and all that, the fame, they're all going to perish. They're all going to melt, um, um, you know, when Babylon the Great, a.k.a. the United States, it's uh, is basically wiped out by thermonuclear missiles in the Third World's War. Um, all these people, they're just going to melt with their money and their riches, you know. So, But it says, but we do it. For an internal prize. So we we looking at the long haul. We looking at the finish line. We looking at a world that's post-America. Right? So you got a lot of Israelites that can't even envision a post-American world. Like, you know, if, you, if you're not able to envision, to imagine a post-American world, um, is, then you don't have the faith necessary. All right? You know? <clears throat> so, verse 26, it says, So I run with purpose... In every step, I am not just shadow boxing. Man, you see that in the NLT. So Paul said, I run with purpose in every step. So when we go out there in the harbors and the, and the edges, when we study, we study with purpose. And that's something I want to talk about as well. Because sometimes you'll read, you know, you get into this um, mindset of, well, let me just let me just make a video. Let me just make a video. You, you read to make a video. You have to understand, like, when you make these lessons, it has to have a purpose. When you study, study, study to actually uh, get the knowledge and the understanding. All right. And once you get that, once you in that mindset, then the epistles will come with the spirit. All right. So, you you know, everything that you do, it has to have a purpose. Don't just don't just do things just because. All right. It says, I am not just shadow boxing, right? You know, because you got, you know, you got guys that are just shadow boxing spiritually. You know, they're not really putting purpose, um, you know, they're not putting purpose behind their lessons. Um, you know, it's, they're not, and again, it's, you know, it, it's, a, it's a tough conversation because you'd be like, well, wh how, you know, who's who's the one judging the lessons? And I mean, you know, I, I kind of get that. But, you know, there, there's, there's also something called quantity. And quality, you know what I'm saying? So you have to have purpose, you know, behind your lessons. It has to be for edification. It's not just like putting up quotas, um, you know, because it's like you shadow boxing, man. Like you got to have purpose behind everything that you do in this, in this gospel. All right. Speak about the things that you know. Speak about the things that you've experienced. All right. Merge that with the scriptures, you know, and you will have lessons that will be edifying not only for you, but also for the brothers, for the elect. All right. <clears throat> now, let me jump before I go back. Let me go because remember, this is the book of Corinthians and, and Paul used the examples of athletic games that actually took place in, in ancient ancient Greece. As we know, the Olympic Games, you know, goes back to Mount Olympia, which is a fairy tale. It's a tale of folklore of ancient Greece of fake gods such as Zeus and Poseidon and Hades and all that nonsense. Um, but those games didn't only take place in Athens. Those games, you had games that took place all over Greece. And Corinth was one of those cities where these games took place. All right. And those games, the games taking place in Corinth were, were called Is Ismian Games, if I'm saying it right. It's Is Ismian, Ismian Games. Um, it says in ancient Greece, a, fe a festival of athletic and musical competitions in honor of the sea god Poseidon held in the spring of the second and fourth years of each Olympiad at his sanctuary on the Isthmus of Corinth. Legend attributed their origin either to Sisyphus, king of Corinth, or to Thesis. All right. So you had the games that took place in Corinth and you see right here it says the Corinth host the Olympic Games. It says ancient Olympics. The is Isthmian Games were held near Corinth in a rural sanctuary on the Isthmus. That is the small neck of land that connects the Peloponnesian Peninsula with central Greece. All right. They, they were organized by the city 
Corinth until 146 BC when the when Corinth was completely destroyed by the Romans. So just a little bit of history right there. And let's hit some images. Um, Ishmael games. As you see right here, you had different games. You had the wrestling games, right? You had that going on. Yep. You got the marathon. All right. They were running the marathon right here. You can clearly see that. Uh, let me see. Uh, let's go back. Let's hit that. Let's hit images. Uh, you see right here. And then you see that so-called God Poseidon with the trident. Which that's, a, that's a false deity. It's not a real God. Poseidon is not real. Obviously, Zeus is not real, obviously. Um, so you have wrestling. So, yeah, these are the things that that uh, Corn, the men in Corinth were doing. And uh, Corinth was inhabited by multiple different nations. That's why you have to know. You have to know this about history. Corinth was inhabited by multiple different nations. Um, multiple different na uh, cities and uh, neighborhoods. You had. You had neighborhoods or colonies. That's that's the word. I actually uh, multiple colonies. You had you had Israelite colonies. You had Jews living in Corinth. You had Chinese living in Corinth. You had Africans living in Corinth. You have you had just like right here in the United States. Like you had every different nation from across the world because Greece was the place to be. Just like right now, Babylon, aka the United States, has been the place to be. So. When you go back to the book of Corinth, Paul was speaking to the Jews in, in Corinth that were basically um, involved into the games. You know what I'm saying? And even even those that, I mean, because listen, even us men of the Lord, right? We might go to a football game, right? We might actually watch a football game, basketball game. It doesn't mean that we participate in it. But if, if we could preach the word and use those things that our people get involved in and we can use that as examples to push the word it helps and that's what paul was doing because paul always believed in persuading the minds of the elect to the best of his ability through the spirit and power of your whole first going first corinthians 9 and 26 so i run with purpose in every step i am not just shadow boxing verse 27 i discipline my body like an athlete training it to do what it should Otherwise, I fear that after preaching to others, I myself might be disqualified. All right. So you definitely don't want to be disqualified. You know, he says he disciplined his body like an athlete, man. All right. Training it to do what it, what it should. All right. So it becomes being in the truth becomes second nature. All right. And we don't just preach. We, 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 we you know, we, we practice what we preach. So we don't become, uh, we don't get disqualified. Why? Because we want to be a part of that roster, man. That one third, all right. The, the the government body, beginning with the government body, the hundred and forty four thousand, twelve thousand men from each tribe, all right. And that's why we have to continue to uh, strive for the mastery, um, you know, of this truth. <clears throat> this is Hebrews chapter six verse nine. It says, "Dear friends," this is the NLT. It says, "Dear friends." Even though we are talking this way, we really don't believe it applies to you. We are confident that you are meant for better things, things that come with salvation. For the Most High is not unjust. He will not forget how hard you have worked for him and how you have shown your love to him by caring for other believers as you still do. Right? Because. Putting these videos and edification, studying, we study for ourselves, but primarily we, we study to, to teach, to teach the elect, all right? And as we teach, we also are taught, all right? So we can live by what we preach and not be hypocrites. Verse 10, for the most high, it's not unjust. Uh, okay, I read that. Verse 11, our great desire is that you will keep on loving others as long as life lasts. In order to make certain that what you hope for will come true, then you and love is sacrifice. By the way, now, that's how you show love. It's, it's sacrifice. That's a, that's the ultimate way to show love is self sacrifice. It says, uh, and and once you decide that you're not gonna follow your your flesh desires to, to for fame and success in this world, 
and you decide now you're going to sacrifice for your whole by Shemel Shai, then you've made the necessary sacrifice. All right. And you just got to keep on doing that. All right. Verse 12. Then you would not become spiritually dull. And indifferent. And I, you definitely don't want to do that. You don't want to be spiritually dull and indifferent. All right? You got to continue to sharpen the sword. You got to continue to study. All right? You got to circle back to the same old precepts, to the same old book. Because when you circle back, um, you get you will circle back and see things that you didn't see in the past. Why? Because every year, every moment, you know, you experience different things. And when you experience different things and you, and you overcome, when you go back to these same old quote unquote, same old precepts, same old books. You'll see different things that were hidden from you because you wasn't ready. All right. And the reason why it was hidden because the Lord wasn't going to give you something, a uh, 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 understanding that you wasn't prepared for because then you'll be out here bugging out and preaching a different doctrine. All right. <clears throat> so I'm going to read it again. Verse 12. Then you would not become spiritually dull and indifferent. Instead, you will follow the example of those who are going to inherit the Most High's promises because of their faith and endurance. All right. <clears throat> so it says, First uh, Thessalonians chapter one, verse two, it says, we give thanks to the Most High always for you all make a mention, mention of you and our prayers, remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love and patience of hope. And our Lord, Yahweh Shah HaMashiach, in the sight of the Most High and our Father, knowing, brethren, beloved, your election of the Most High. Am I right? You know, it's just, uh, it's about, let me see, I think, yeah, yeah, nah, nah, let me hit this. This is Ecclesiastes 9 and 11. I'm going to read that in the NLT because we already know what that sounds like in the KGV. Ecclesiastes 9 and 11, it says, I have observed something else under the sun. The fastest runner doesn't always win the race. And the strongest warrior doesn't always win the battle. The wise sometimes go hungry. And the skillful are not necessarily wealthy. And those who are educated don't always lead successful lives. It is all decided by chance. By being in the right place at the right time. Hey, hey listen, and, and it's spirit because I've never actually, this is my first time reading this in the NLT. And I, we always talk, I always talk to the brothers about how the whole Bashar Mashah deals with perfect timing. All right. It's it's all about timing. Right? The more you learn, the more you grind, you understand that it's all about timing. That's why the you you have to be a part of the elect, man, because if you're not a part of the elect, man. You're gonna do the wrong. You're gonna do the right thing at the wrong time, and you're gonna be wrong, man. You always gonna be at the wrong. Eventually, you're gonna be at the wrong place at the wrong time, doing the wrong thing, you know. And 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 that's just something you don't have control over. All right. So this is this is powerful right there, man. So let's go to <clears throat> this is uh, Psalms chapter one twenty eight verse two. It says. I'm going to start in one. It says, that's, uh, okay. It says, a song of degrees. Blessed is everyone that feareth the Lord, that walketh in his ways. For thou shalt eat the labor of thine hands. Happily shalt thou be, and it shall be well with thee. All right? So we're going to eat the labor of our hands, brothers, man. We are going to eat, man. You know what I'm saying? We're going to eat eternally, man. It's never going to stop, man. We're going to have a table full of food, man. You know, we're going to have wine. We're going to have liquor, man. It's just going to keep on coming. You're going to have to tell your, you know, your slave, your slaves, waiters and, 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 and waitresses, man. You're going to have to tell them, man, hey, stop, man. I'm chilling. You know what I'm saying? Like, and it's not going to stop because if it, you know, like it's already, it's cooked. It's being cooked. It's dead. Like one thing about wealth and the type of wealth that we're going to have. And this is something that Esau has kind of um, experienced on the left-hand side here in, in Babylon. Like, you'll be um, upset. You'll see how all oh, Babylon is throwing away food, like, for the longest, right? Babylon was, been, was known for throwing away food in the garbage. Like, good food is thrown in the garbage while people are starving across the world. Well, you are always going to have that. Like, the wealthy always have extra. The wealthy, part of being wealthy is having so much stuff 
that you even that you gotta get rid of the good stuff. Right? You gotta get rid of the good stuff. And you're gonna get rid of the good stuff. It doesn't mean that as a as a as you're gonna you're gonna grab, you're gonna tell your people, hey, you know what, hey man, just go ahead and give it to that uh struggling heathen over there. Nah. Throw it in the trash. <laughs> you know, you're not even gonna worry about this, man. That's that next level wealth. All right. That's when you know that you win it, man. When you got so much that you throwing you throwing away so called good food because it's still gonna be more good food, man. <clears throat> Verse two it says, For thou shalt eat the labor of thine hands, happily shalt thou be, and it shall be well with thee. Thy wife shall be as a fruitful vine by the side the sides of thine house, thy children like olive plant round about thy table. Behold that dust behold that dust shall the, the man be blessed that fear of the Lord. The Lord shall bless thee out of Zion, and thou shalt see the good of Jerusalem all the day all the days of thy life. Yea, thou shalt see thy children's children and peace upon Israel. Alright, and that's something that um that's something to fight for. So we have to be diligent so we can see that. All right. And that's a promise that the Lord made. And most high is not a man that he should lie. All right. So let's uh, close up with Ecclesiasticus or Sirach of the Apocrypha, chapter 36, verse 16. It says, Reward them that wait for thee and let thy prophets be found faithful. All right. Plain and simple. And uh, that's the little bit that I had through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shemel Shai, just words of, uh, words of exhortation. Um, you know, just rem remembering that, hey, man, listen, although it's the fourth quarter, we still we still running a marathon and uh, certain things still have to develop before before the big war. All right. So uh, so with that, I'm going to say, Carl, hello, I'm like, hold by Shemel, shout out double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone and shout out one salutation to all you sincere, I can, of course, the four winds pushing his truth with sincerity of heart because I'm a guy